Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch King. As you guys know, the goal of this channel is to show you watches which you've never seen before, especially in the high-end independent segment. Usually I love to go really deep in Instagram or some forums and find brands which I love from 10 years ago and bring them to light today for you guys. So today on the channel, we have the guys from Monar Fabri here, Igor and Michal. Thank Hi. you so much for coming. Yeah? We are nice to be here and we would like to show uh, you or products or, or watches. Perfect, let's do it. So I've seen you like years ago on like Instagram and Facebook and it was also always for me like a mystery because the watches look beautiful, even your photography, even your Instagram account. And I wondered like, what do you guys do? Where do you live? How does this all work? You know, because it looked like piece unique, but, and I understood it was expensive because I saw the, the handwork, the engraving, the finishing, all that stuff. So I'm very proud and happy to have you guys here on the show. Thank you for coming all the way from Slovakia as well. So what was the beginning of uh, your story, your journey? Uh, we has met, uh, we are born jewelers and uh, we met at one uh, work, we work together and we have the same passion for quality in jewelry segment. I have also passion for the watches, like every guy mm -hmm. who likes uh, cars, watches mechanics, and so, yeah, mechanics. As a jeweler, we have no school, we cannot understand the watch before and uh, we have learned by ourselves. It was really difficult because every watchmaker that we met in Slovakia tell us that it isn't impossible to create a watch because in Slovakia nobody yeah. ever made a watch and we every everyone that tell us that it's impossible for us it's no 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 it's possible it's possible it's motivation and yeah it's, it's good <laughs> motivation for us and uh, then we start learning and uh, on our mistakes of course like like everyone who has no school and the beginning was really complicated because we think that it's not complicated to find any information, but it was pretty hard to find all the details and, and the secret of the watchmaking. When did you guys uh, start the company? How many years ago? In 2006, I think. Yes, yeah. that's it's very early. 2006. Because today yes. you can find like manufacturers, producers on Instagram. They all have their accounts, like the big uh, uh, movement manufacturers even. Back then, I know it was very closed and secret and you have yes. to maybe come here to see them. Yeah, and talk that's to them. right. That's right. We start on basic unitas, mm -hmm. like I think many watchmakers, which is really, I think it's a good movement for understand the uh, watchmaking. And then we have some customers that want something more complication or vintage movements or something. That, and we are always uh, looking at these things as why not? Why not? We, we can try it. And if, if it don't work, it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. But uh, we always uh, made it yeah it's spent a lot of lot of time so some pieces maybe one and a half years it would be really crazy to work on one piece one and a half years it was what what was the most complex watch you ever made is it this one here or has yeah, something yeah, else is it this one because a lot of watchmakers cannot do this and for us until now we are 25 years since we starting making jewelry and we can do it i think really good we also engraved and making finish also for other companies so Igor, what do you do on these watches and what do you do, Michal? Just so we understand the dynamic a bit between the duo. I'm create designing and complete uh, skeletonizing, mm -hmm. hand finishing, hand engraving, stone setting. Yeah. So the client, uh, the, what, the email comes in, you maybe manage the yeah, communication? Yeah, I manage the communication with mm -hmm. the customer. Also, uh, when we need some parts or some tools or something and uh, also I make assembling also engraving stone setting I can do but we try every every area or piece need to be different we never do twice same watch it's very cool I think that's uh, honorable to do so let's dive into the watches a bit here because you brought uh, three watches here for the one on your wrist some dials and uh, movement plate and also some very cool things here so what do we have here this is your uh, Entry level watch, or what? How you, how how would you call this one? It's uh, the basic watch, yes, with hours and minutes. It's with Unitas, but mm -hmm. it's with higher frequency Unitas. It's twenty one six hundred. The quality I think between the basic and this one, it's really big. A lot of parts are better quality, and the precision of the time is really really good. I like the barrel decoration as well. Yes. It's very cool, the round one. So you basically source a Unitas movement, skeletonized bevel. Yes, we also changing, not maybe on this piece, but if we use Unitas, we never use it as it is. We change also mainspring and uh, some parts, also mm -hmm. sometimes balance wheel, mm -hmm. if we want better precision. Yeah, because I see like this here has a balance wheel which does not look standard. 
And this is our first prototype with uh, this type of skeleton engine. And it was very popular because a lot of uh, our customers really like it because it's pretty different like yeah, other things cool. and it's 15 years old. <laughs> At this time, no company has something like this. Couple of years later, Maurice Lacroix has something similar, but the balance wheel like you ask it's our in-house, not easy to, <laughs> to create, sure. but uh, now we understand it, how it works and it's, it's not easy, but it's possible, it's to, possible. to create also, also in-house balance wheel. And also this one here, by the way, guys, I have a full, uh, full approval of touching this by hand before you <laughs> start your comment raging here. So here we have a beautiful uh, engraving and scrutinization. Igor, your job or? Yes, this is, <laughs> <laughs> this is my job. What was the inspiration behind this? Don't remember, but also a couple of years ago, the customers want floral ornaments and we wanted more three dimensional, not only flat engraved. And the main plate is? Yeah. Blue radium. Blue radium plated. But now we don't use it because the plating of the blue radium is not easy to make well. What is this uh, unusual blue dial here? It's our first try to play with enamel. It was really nice. We was very surprised that we can do also this. <laughs> <laughs> but it's uh, we always wanted to work with uh, enamel. This is a pure silver dial with uh, the black. It's, it's no color. It's oxidation on silver only, mm -hmm. but it's really resistant. It's really good when, also, even when you touch it. It's very nice. I thought it's a print and, at the beginning, but yes, it's not. It's, huh? it's see, like it is, but it's 3D dial filled with enamel. Very cool. Oxidation. And I think it uh, looks really, really nice. Yeah. This was for your brand or for... Uh... Uh, this was made for one brand that uh, make alcohol okay. <laughs> in Slovakia. <laughs> and uh, <Of> it's a <laughs> famous brand, famous brand, a really good <laughs> one. But uh, they want some presentation for his big client. Yeah. And uh, cool. we, we play with it also with this. If customers are interested also in this, it's possible. Yeah, to, you can do enamel. Huh? So it's very cool. Use enamel. What would something like this exact watch cost? This one, this is in titanium and bronze, mm -hmm. and uh, the starting price is about 18,000 without taxes. Yeah, and then the client basically with you designs the watch. It all depends on the preparation of the customers. If yeah. he wants skeletonized or, or the dial, it's the price are, you know, mm -hmm. different. And also if it's, you know, polished edges or black polish parts or something, it's much more expensive than then we go to this big boy which is a movement i recognize from miles away because uh one of my first uh, factory visits i think back in 2017 was at christophe claret and i recognized the the turbion bridge like uh, every watch i see like a gira perego or a jacques Edro, i see the bridge i'm like this is a claret movement for sure or at least the turbion what's the story behind this watch how was it made and uh, yeah how do people order this as well because it's magnificent and beautiful we like that it's a lot of 3D, the movement is not flat. And it starts all with the documentary yeah. about watchmaking with uh, Anton Pertius and Philippe Dufour. And uh, there we saw first time this movement. And we don't know at the time that it's by Christophe Claret. And we want it, we really like the shape, the design of the movement, the tourbillon. And it was long, long time ago, maybe 17, 18 years ago. And we start to find a way how we can have it because in the video, the price of the watch was astronomical. Yeah. I think 500,000 or something. <laughs> Good old days. <laughs> Good old days. And um, we find a way with the uh, help of our good friends that he personally know, Christoph mm -hmm. Claret. We met with him, we show him our skeletonized watches at the time and he really liked it. And he has no problem to sell us yeah. as a small brand. Uh, his movements. Beautiful. And what did you, you do on this watch exactly? The stainless steel uh, ring and setting the diamonds and sapphires. And backside, the style Art Deco, Art Nouveau. Fully hand engraved. Fully hand engraved. I also mentioned Christophe Carré here. Yes. It's nice. Yes. We don't want to hide it because why not? Mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice movement. Also the hands, what I see on a lot of brands has maybe nice movement, but he put there some bracket hands and that's all. And I hate it. I hate that as well. I, I have nothing against bracket, but, <laughs> but I think doesn't that always it fit, yeah. doesn't always fit. And we, on every watch, we, we made uh, unique. Also the hands yeah. made by hand. 
I love it. I'm most eager to work with watch hands and he can create really thin, thin watch hands also on my watch. It looks like uh, it's not made by hand. And the case and the buckle also look not standard. Yes, so. this is uh, one of our first uh, in-house cases. Hmm. When we met at Basel Fair, Speak Marine, and he see that I have on my wrist this watch and he, he tells me that uh, he really liked the watch, but the case is too usual. And uh, that was the beginning of the creating or in those cases. And also the cases are a lot of different. Some customers want thinner, bigger, smaller, and we need only one piece. And, you know, yeah. it's it's not possible to order. Plus the materials piece. different, right? Because yeah. here you said it's titanium bronze yeah. and this is rose gold. This is rose gold. The other one is yellow, gold, yellow yeah. gold. And now we make a lot of platinum cases, yeah. which is really, really complicated to make because material is really resistant to machining. It's extremely easy to damage the, the tools, huh? the tools yeah. in a second. In a second. And what's the, the gears around the periphery here of the movement? This is the winding gear. When you wind the watch, it's turned around the whole movement and it's a really nice effect. It's and nice, yeah, yeah. I saw it. I thought it's. I, I was asking myself, what is this? Very simple, clean. Yeah, like, simple, uh, clean, symmetric. Yes. Yes, yeah, symmetric, exactly. A very good job. And uh, for people to understand, what does something like this cost? You don't make the same twice? Yeah, yeah. But, something uh, similar starting from around uh, 110,000 euro without mm -hmm. taxes. And again, uh, finished by you guys stone set, case, buckle, engraving crown all by you strap you don't make no it's made by come on you straps it's not easy <laughs> not a problem maybe in the future maybe in the future we can make it <laughs> but now we cooperate with one czech company that yeah. will make also for us strap. this is from abp paris we mm -hmm. work with the company a lot of years it's yeah. good quality it's the last system. missing link you have but I now think, we strap making. now we won't uh use less of the alligator strap mm -hmm. we won't more simple something yeah calf and stuff like this yes maybe something what is good to wear resistant yeah and sweater resistant and uh, looks long a long time uh, like new mm -hmm. and the watch uh, speak marinto spoke about to you is this one that you yes, have on the wrist yes, is this one this is also a um, more starting point or i'm not sure how old it is maybe 12 years this is my first watch that i made for myself igor has similar one but uh, he don't have it here because needs to be serviced yeah. and we don't have time to make to service, service on, yeah, yeah. on our own, own pieces you know can imagine this is also only to us with a regulator it's made to the complication of the regulator by ourselves here is used also our in-house balance wheel how does the balance wheel work so far let's say because i know making a balance wheel is like uh, one of the most difficult things to do i mean they look yes. nice often yes. but often they it's, don't perform it's uh, thousands of uh, milligrams it's not easy to find the right weight of the balance wheel. Yeah, but so far the performance, if you compare to the regular one, is the same or...? Yeah, it's, it's better, I think, because the regular is made from brass only. You can have also the better version, uh, mm -hmm. like a lot of watchmakers use with the screws. It's great. Also the hairspring on the balance wheel, it's, it's better quality. Yeah. I think the hairspring is the most important part of the watch. Here on the balance wheel, we need more weight. It's not easy to see when it's moving. There is inside two rubies, opposite side, to make the balance wheel heavy. Very and nice. it's really nice with the rubies. At the beginning, we use some laser for help us creating dials or something. And this is a lot of technical dial, mm -hmm. but it's uh, engraved by hand, also the numbers. It's, yeah. it's not made by any machine. I mean, it looks like it's machine. I, I play, stamp I play or something, a lot yeah. of these, but. I also, the hands are custom as well, obviously. Yeah. How much something like this today? Around 20,000. Yeah. Tax. And then uh, the watch uh, which I requested for you guys to bring, because I think <laughs> it's one of the most beautiful things I saw. Period. Heavier piece, a bigger piece, very ornamental piece, beautiful buckle. How difficult was this to engrave? Easy one or two days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, what do you mean difficult? <laughs> one month engraving was buckle. Movement is also engraving, two weeks engraving. Yeah and polishing edges, beveling. It's yes. a vintage movement from yeah. Mailan, it's been a repeater and uh, it's from Pocket Watch. Mm. We really like also the vintage movements because there are the, there is the story behind every watch and it's uh, really nice that you 
cannot see in the new movements. I see that it's more machining and mm -hmm. there's a lot of handwork. And we completely restore the movement, change what needs to be changed, repair some parts and uh, we create a unique case for the piece. And you said it's a uh, yellow gold, huh? this one? This is yellow gold, yeah. Because the client requested it or? Yeah, yes. it's for our good friend. A lot of our uh, clients are now our good friends. Sure, yeah. It, it works this it way. Makes sense. We are really glad that we have an opportunity to make something like this. From the beginning, we like the repeaters. Mm -hmm. Like I think a lot of woodmakers really, really like it. Yeah. It's the king complication. When we buy first mini repeater as, as another woodmaker, and it was full, too many parts to complicate yeah. it, how it works, and it takes us a lot of time to work on it. But uh, until now, we made three. And all were unique, huh, basically. Yeah, all were well. unique. And the first one that we have, we have it from the customer. They send us the movement oh, nice. that, that he want, and the movement was in terrified condition. Mm -hmm. It's it's non working piece, and we think, oh, it's not a problem. Yeah, but easy. We, <laughs> we spent maybe half year to restore the movement. It wow. was extremely complicated, but we have learned a lot of. For yeah, sure. best call is trying. But it's very, very time consuming. Also, this piece uh, takes us maybe one year to complete yeah. from the beginning to, to finish. And I love that you just left the whole dial open, basically. Yes, it, this is also one thing that we made because there was central hours and minutes and we have changed it. To decentralize yes, it's, it. Huh? it's made by us from titanium, it's in the dice. Yeah, and the case pack is also engraved by you guys, yes. right? Engraved by hand, it's filled with the special color. I see that. We don't like when, you know, you have engraved parts and uh, it's it's dirt. Yeah. There, and when you have color there, it's no dirt. It, hide, it, hide, <laughs> it hides a bit, huh? Yes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is like a grail piece for me. Case is, I think, 46. 46, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not extremely big. Let me put I this on my wrist. I have a yes. pretty good wrist. For me, it's okay. It's okay. Just to your reference, I have a 18.7 centimeter wrist, not small, it's on the bigger side, but this is, I mean, again, it's it's not, it's wearable. It's wearable, of course, but also I say if you want a movement which looks like this, with this many components and this cool factor, you have to account for the size, that's it. Can we uh, hear the minute repeater? Yes, yes. Beautiful, man. So loud. I love it. And I love how all the components slowly unwind. The lever goes up when it's about to finish. So how much would a watch like this cost with the engraving, with the diamonds I see now, with the movement engraving as well, buckle engraving, gold. The price for this piece is around 220 to 50. Yeah. It depends on all the details. Yeah. It takes one year to make. Huh? Yeah. But again, if you want a case which is not engraved, you cut out yeah. like a month at least to yes, it's, work it's just can there. Yes, it can be less. So you can chop the price a bit. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, if you don't want so much engraving, you know, we also can see the one on the book there. This is a bit uh, different type of engraving here that yes, you did. This is more modern. Yeah. And this is uh, also done by you guys in-house? Yes. yes. It's very cool. Platinum. I love so the this diversity. Was platinum. This was in platinum. So guys, Igor, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Michael thank as well, you. appreciate thank you, you coming all the way here to Zurich to, to be able to show your watches uh, in, in our light and also for the audience to experience this. And guys, please check them out on Instagram and the website as well. If you have some questions, obviously send an email. Igor is going to be busy working on the watches. Michal has a bit more time for that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again for being here. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you soon. Thank you.